Hey, what's going on guys? It's Tony TV here, back again for another YouTube video. It is an honor because I have just finished Silent Hill 2 Remake and I have a lot to say. It was a fucking ride, man. Like, this game was so good. I, I enjoyed every bit of it. The whole time I was just blown away by a lot of new stuff that I wasn't expecting in the game. A lot of Easter eggs, a lot of uh, new boss fights too. The whole experience was great and it, it felt so good because we've waited so long for this remake and i remember playing the original and, and thinking how mysterious the game was and just how unique it was especially for the time that it came out and a lot of people have their own stories for what silent hills they got started with and what got them into the franchise but for me i just really enjoyed the whole experience and i thought it was a beautiful game it wasn't perfect but it was it was overall probably one of the best remakes i've ever played if not the best remake that's saying a lot for uh, a developing team that is not well established yet compared to if you talk about capcom or konami or other developers and publishers out there so with having bloober team come at this like with a thousand percent of their effort and pushing it to the limits i thought it was daring very bold and ballsy man like they 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 pushed the limits and really exceeded my expectations for this game with that being said i will be releasing the rest of my playthrough series i have to go through and edit some of those videos so uh be, bear with me i haven't posted anything because i've been investing a lot of my time with silent hill 2. i also will be kind of i guess i guess i'll be posting two playthroughs the second playthrough is going to be the next game plus ng plus but this one will be uh straight gameplay and it won't include me talking or my face i'll be showing you james Sunderland wearing the robbie the rabbit cosmetic because i thought that was funny and I, I really wanted to have it i also will be trying to go for the rest of the endings so i i won't post all the different endings uh like as far as like gameplay goes but i will be posting like I, what i want to do is make a video that has all the cutscenes for like kind of like a cinematic cutscene for the game and i'm going to do it for each of the cosmetics because i think it's also funny to see robbie the rabbit inside of some of these series cutscene moments but yeah i'm playing it on super easy now i played through on hard and it was pretty ridiculous if you played on standard and you're going for hard next playthrough good luck it was a challenge they definitely made this game more competitive in that sense so i had to kind of like dodge and learn timings kind of like dark souls so that's what it kind of felt like to me even though dark souls is nothing compared to this when it comes to boss fights it obviously they're a lot harder in that game um but this was definitely challenging if you haven't played silent hill 2 i definitely suggest it if you play the original and you're still doubting it and you're still thinking about all the criticisms that were received prior to the game coming out give it a chance come up with your own opinions don't follow other people and just be like yeah i've made my absolute decision based on what people say people are upset about certain aspects of the game changes having like a dei or a consulting agency who gives a fuck dude honestly it doesn't matter because it didn't really affect or change anything in the game if you play the game you won't see really anything that was changed if you still hate angela's look oh fucking well if you hate maria's look oh well man like it's a remake and the redesigns on creative developers who decide to put their own style into it and that's completely fine you even have a lot of the talks from the the old team silent team members talking about how good this game is and ito who designed these monsters saying that the boss fight for the abstract daddy was way better than it was in the original and that was due to limitations back then so bloober team took a lot of criticism from the the team and also like guidance received a lot of guidance to be able to develop this game and they had a lot of help along the way but the positive things about this game outweigh the negatives and in that sense I'm, I'm i'm very happy for it so yeah that's pretty much that i also will be coming out with a video that goes through a full review of the game and my verdict of it so first impressions and verdict and that will be coming up later on i'm gonna get through the playthrough series posting and then i will be doing that video and then on top of that i'll be releasing the new game plus video so definitely look forward to that but anyways this video today uh is part just letting you know i completed the game and how i feel so far i'm very very happy about it and this is a special time i'm still playing through the game 
on New Game Plus and just having a fucking blast. Uh, spoiler alert uh, for the next 15 seconds. Don't listen if you don't want to be spoiled. But for the New Game Plus, you do get unlockable new main menu screen. You get a new um, new options such as new filters. You can unlock it's not just a 90s grade filter. You have multiple other options. You also can get new items in the game, right? And I won't go through through it too much, but you unlock new endings that you can you can you can do like the secret endings and stuff. But you get the chainsaw. The chainsaw is confirmed. It's back. Uh, you can use it, and it's basically one. Sh if you play on light, at least, which I'm doing right now, it's one shot kill for every monster. Not for bosses, at least, but for the monsters that basically get fucked up by this chainsaw. And there is a part with the chainsaw where he raises it up in the air like they did in the original. So that that's back in the game too. But yeah, just uh, that's to sum it up. Uh, right now, I want to do a reaction video. So I watched the first video that was released about James Sunderland's character that Bluebird team posted. I think it was yesterday or the day before. And so there's a new one that was just released. I wanted to show you my reaction to it. Yeah, another thing I wanted to say before we get started with this video is that I do love how how Bluebird team is very involved with post launch stuff. So like they're bringing out some more information, talking about the game and like the background development scene and all. That. So this is this right here, like the docu, like a little mini docu series of of the game, the making of the game is really cool. And I, I love that Bluebird team did this. Thank you so much for this. And also Matt Leonard, you are the man. I don't know if I'm pronouncing your name right, but thank you so much for for all the responses you have given fans inside the the inside twi Twitter or X, whatever you want to call it. I know there's a lot of hate that was part of this game and the fans expressing that, but you guys pulled through and and you beat it. You guys did such a phenomenal job, but we'll save that for that video that I'm talking about. So let's get started here. Creating a game is a journey and we wanted to share ours with you. Of course, Bloober. It's hard to imagine a good horror game without effective sound design. Interestingly enough, sound and music are added at the very end of production. Yet for the players, everything begins with them. Mm, interesting. So they put the music and everything in at the end? So dim and light, lights and listen closely. We really wanted to emphasize the use of silence because being able to listen to various sounds and noises coming out from the town of Silent Hill would be really interesting for the players. We know from the very beginning that approaching Silent Hill 2 shouldn't be uh, made in the same way like any other game. Like it's, uh, this game was was making it in a, in a very special manner. And we knew that playing with silence, playing with specific sounds, uh, it's the most important thing. Like in this game, like every sound, even for monsters, has a meaning. People don't understand the difference between Silent Hill 2 and every other game. So yes, we talk so big about it, about it being the greatest psychological horror game of all time, and you'll hear that all over and over again. The reason why is because this game touches a lot of sensitive subjects, and it's very, very like hard to talk about this in real life. And a lot of people go through certain trauma, and they're experiencing certain mental issues or certain trauma and bad experiences or things that have happened really like for the worst in their life that changed the course of their life too. And so even if they haven't experienced it, it still touches an emotional side to everyone because it could happen to anyone. It could happen to you, your friend, anybody. And it's just one of those things that hits everyone to their core that really opened up their doors to this game and really tried to understand it. And once they understood it, they were like, wow, I'm blown away. They're talking about sound design. They're talking about everything that you do in the game matters, right? And in the original, it did when it came to the different endings you would unlock. For all the sounds, all the actions, everything that you do in this game, it does matter. But it's just that the attention to detail and the things that they did in this game, which I'm sure they're going to get to, uh, it, it all mattered because of how the game made us feel back when we first played it. And it was a very core, core experience, but also a very unique and very rare experience that we, we, we got. And 
a lot of the people who play this game are probably younger too. I mean, I played this game uh fully fully through when I was much older, but when I first touched it, I was young. And even from the beginning scene, I was very blown away because I was like, this is very mysterious. I wonder what this is, what's going to happen. Is Mary really alive? Like it gave you that sense of like, whoa, like we're in this creepy town and we got to go find our, our wife. Like she's somewhere out there. And so it gave you that sense of discovery, mysteriousness, and it had unsettling parts to it. And I remember playing the beginning sequence going down that initial path that you take in the forest and it was creepy the sound design everything was scary like it just didn't feel good at all and i didn't like it like it was like very very scary obviously the remake was a little different but still like everything mattered to the development of this game so we played the game a lot and we wanted to catch the feeling it evoked in us, and uh, we inspired our new designs on the original sounds. But we also took some of the sounds, like one to one, and put them in the game, and layered it with the new stuff and did some post process. And we are very curious if the players can find them all. So the most memorable part for me was the clever use of silence in the original. It's him. and we really wanted to recreate that silence, but in a different way. You sit in a place for 10 minutes and really tune yourself uh, to the environment that you're sitting in. A cool thing about the sound in this game, if you play with the haptic feedback on the controller, so the, the PlayStation 5 controller at least, when you're in the rain, you can actually feel the vibrations of the rain hitting the controller, and it really gives that immersive feel. I thought that was a really cool little detail. You can actually hear a lot, uh, especially when you close your eyes. So I highly recommend uh, just play. The surround sound with the with the headphones too, fucking crazy, man. Playing the game and and just stop for a minute and listen to the ambience that it's there. Uh, because it's beautiful. Dude, <laughs> this game is so beautiful, man. The the under the the other other world on hard mode, fucking that, that shit Sometimes was terrifying. You will hear not much more than just James breathing heavily. We trigger your imagination with specific tones in dark corridors, and we use unexpected sounds associated with monsters, making your you question what they really are. Hello? Is anyone there? So probably the most challenging part was to create the sound for the monsters because this, their sounds are very iconic and people are expecting something special there. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> we wanted to achieve uh, this feeling of pain uh, and and pleasure at the same time. Oh, I hated the mannequins, dude. This guy, dude, they made them hide so really well. Hard to differentiate the Holy sound shit. design and music in our project, but it was made on purpose because we really aimed uh, to creating this cohesive and complete experience for the players, which immerses uh, us into the world of James's twisted mind. Oh, I love that they left this part in. So the audio layer okay. uh, in boss fights was especially important and challenging in creating immersive experience. Uh, they did a good job, holy shit, dude. Amplify this emotional and psychological aspect of each battle. The way that so a lot of you probably if you're newer to the if you're new to the franchise or new to this game at least you probably think that the pyramid head getting shot at and freezing for a second before he starts moving normally again was like a glitch or something 
that actually is intentional because in the original when you shot things uh, shot like the bosses they they kind of slowed down and it was like freezing uh, i don't know the meaning behind it it probably has some type of symbolism to it but that that was kind of kept faithful from the original which i thought was pretty cool little detail and they but they still made it kind of modern with how the enemy moves faster uh, the unsettling industrial noises in conjunction with oppressive music create this claustrophobic atmosphere and discomfort. There was a division of work inside the team and one sound designer may have been working with combat design team. <coughs> Where other at the same time was working with level designers to support ambiences and events on their location. We wanted to achieve really high detail, detail, and one of the things that we can do is to record thousands of Foley recordings for all characters, objects, events, and what's more important, sounds of the most famous green jacket of James that became sort of an icon in the game industry. Hmm. It's actually really cool how they record sounds in, in games. We absolutely love the original soundtrack of Silent Hill 2. Um, it basically made me pursue the career of a composer and sound designer. And we really wanted to bring back as many of the old tracks as possible to the remake. We re-recorded and resampled many of them, uh, even by using the old and original sample libraries. And we also used modern mixing techniques because the sound and the whole audio scape is made with the surround systems in mind. So even the music, uh, you can hear different things in the front and the rear speakers. I think it's going to be really interesting for the players to uh, find out hidden clues and hidden Easter eggs, uh, sound-wise, but also musically-wise. Music is an irreplaceable part of the world building Silent Hill 2, but also you could even tell that it's coming out straight from James's head in a diegetic way. Another important example is the recording session with actors. Usually there is a sound technician to watch over the quality and technical side, but you also need to cooperate with somebody from the narrative team so that they can keep an eye on the performers and emotional impact of the scene. What kind of place? The kind two lovers might call special. I can show you if you want. Unless you have somewhere else to be. Something else to do. Hey, <laughs> easy there. I'm just messing with you. For me, uh, I love her flirtiness in the remake. Sounds so good. Came to the to the table. Uh, it's it is the moment when you start to feel that yeah everything clicks together. It starts to create like this kind kind of like uncomfortable feeling uh, in, in our heads that, okay, like this is, this is something different. This is something that, that we need to go through uh, because it creates like this game being unique uh, and, and what Silent Hill is all about. Yeah, so that was that video about uh, the silent, basically making these sounds and and all that for the game. I think they nailed it. The The original game had very unique and, and just bizarre, morbid sounds that you would not hear or even know how that sound was, was created, even if it was like a, it was a, an artificial sound. So I really thought that that was the, one of the biggest unique aspects about the original and then for them to come and make new sounds and to do it in the remake, you know, it could have been easy because you got to create that same kind of sounds that they had back in the day. And even back then, the audio quality was was different. Uh, the technologies were different. The way that they they approached it is different. And then trying to do that again in the modern sense is, is a difficult task. And I, I really do love it. And I, I really hope that if you guys are starting out Silent Hill 2 and, and just begun, enjoy it. Have, have fun. It's a journey. 
take your time, but you have plenty of playthroughs to go with afterwards and unlockables. So, oh yeah, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and uh, cut it here, but definitely look forward to some new videos coming out soon of what I discussed earlier. And I'll see you guys in the next one.